Hi, everybody. Tonight, we're going to talk about the markup for loanable funds. We're going to talk about three things, the equilibrium interest rate, shifts of the demand for loanable funds, and then shifts of the supply of loanable funds. One quick note, this markup for loanable funds is a long module, so we're going to cover the first half of it tonight, and we will cover the second half of it tomorrow night. Let's get right into it. Let's think back to the savings investment identity. This was from a few modules ago. What was that all about? Well, remember, savings investment identity says that savings equal investment, or S equals I. If we break savings into two pieces, we get private savings plus public savings, otherwise known as national savings, and that still equals an investment, equals investment. And then national savings plus capital inflow, remember net inflow, equals investment. Well, the market for loanable funds is where savers and investors come together. Savers' money gets borrowed by investors, and investors in this case, remember, are firms with investment spending projects, so think of them less like individuals. Now, the price of the funds that is borrowed, so the price of the funds that is determined in the loanable funds market is the interest rate, or R. One quick thing to point out as we start talking about this curve, when we think of interest rates in the market for loanable funds, keep in mind that we're talking about the real interest rate, not the nominal interest rate. Remember that the real interest rate equals the nominal interest rate minus expected inflation because inflation can impact people's interest in going out into the market for loanable funds, either as borrowers or as savers. Okay, let's look at the demand for loanable funds. You can see the curve going down and to the right. Does it make sense that it would do that? Sure. Why is that? Well, as the real interest rate falls, so the interest rate in the market for loanable fund, funds, more projects become profitable. So the quantity of loanable funds demanded is going to increase. So again, classic downward sloping demand curve. Let's talk about the supply of loanable funds and the fact that that supply curve also is sort of in a classic sense, it moves up and to the right. Does that make sense? Sure it does. Why? Well, as interest rates increase, what does that mean? That means that as I am making more money, interest rate increasing, as I am someone who puts my money into here, providing the supply of loanable funds, I'm going to put more money in and increase the quantity of loanable funds available in the market. Equilibrium in the loanable funds market. What does this look like? Well, we can think of equilibrium in its classic sense where supply equals demand. Let's look at the four quadrants to understand what's going on here. If the equilibrium rate of return is 8%, and in this case, the quantity of loanable funds is $300 billion, let's think about what happens here. Well, if I am somewhere as a borrower, if I'm somewhere along this curve, this means that I have a project that's going to return greater than 8%. Well, if I have a project with, the greater, with a rate of return 8% 8 or, 8 of 8 or greater, they'll definitely get funded because somebody's going to want to come in and loan me that money. On the opposite side here, on the supply side, Offers are not going to be accepted from lenders who demand interest rates of more than 8%. This, If the equilibrium rate is 8% and as a lender I'm asking for more, I'm simply not going to get it. Now, down here, projects with the rate of return less than 8% don't get funded. Why is that? Well, because I as a lender can go out into this market for loanable funds and find people who are going to have projects that are guaranteed to return me 8%. And then last year in this sort of fourth quadrant, Offers accepted from lenders willing to lend at interest rate of 8% or less. Well, these are also these are going to get funded because I as a I as someone who's demanding funds, if I can find a lender who's going to give me a rate of interest that's under 8%, these are definitely going to be accepted. So that's how these four quadrants work. We're going to talk more about them tomorrow to make sure we can differentiate across all four of those. Let's talk about shifts the shifts of the demand, so shifts in the demand curve for loanable funds. First, changes in perceived business opportunities. What does that mean? Well, a change in beliefs about the rate of return on investment spending can increase or reduce the amount of desired spending at any given interest rate. Why is that? Well, if firms believe that the economy has profitable investment opportunities, the demand for loanable funds is going to increase. Conversely, if the firms believe the economy is poised for a recession where profitable investment companies, uh, uh, investment opportunities will be few and far between, what's going to happen? That demand for funds is going to go down because they're not going to be as interested in investing. Now, changes in government borrowing is, have an interesting impact here on 
the demand for loanable funds. Governments that run budget deficits are actually a major source of the demand for loanable funds. Why is that? Well, when the government runs a budget deficit, the Treasury has to borrow funds and acquire more debt. What this does is increases the demand for loanable funds in the market. If the government were to run a huge surplus, on the other hand, less debt would be required and the demand for loanable funds would decrease. So again, government, government spending and government plans to increase or decrease their level of debt can move the demand curve either to the right or to the left. Now, let's talk about shifts in the supply of loanable funds and two things that happen there. First is changes in private saving behavior. What does that mean? Well, if households decide to consume more and save less, what's going to happen? The supply of loanable funds is going to shift to the left purely because instead of having those loanable funds available to loan, now those, those funds instead went into consumption. On the opposite side, changes in capital inflows can actually cause shifts either to the right or the left. Why is that? Well, for a variety of reasons, a country can receive more capital inflow in a given year or less inflow in a year. If a, na if a nation is perceived to have a, a stable government, a strong economy, and is a good place to save money, foreign money is going to flow into that nation's financial markets, increasing the supply of loanable funds. So a shift there to the right, as we can see. Now, on the other side of the coin is if a nation is seen as instable, then you're going to see a leftward ship shift in the supply of loanable funds simply because those won't be there. Okay, that's all we're going to cover tonight. Um, I wanted to keep it short, and I also wanted to make sure we had time tomorrow to practice and to get into the second half. So we talked about the savings investment identity, why that's important. We talked about investors by definition, and then the price of investing, price of borrowing, uh, determined in the loanable funds market is the interest rate. We talked about the fact that we're discussing real interest rates, we talked about the demand for loanable funds, how we move up and down that curve. We talked about the supply of loanable funds, why we move up and down that curve. We talked about equilibrium in the loanable funds market and what happens when we're outside of that equilibrium in any one of what we're, what we're calling our four quadrants. And we talked about shifts in the demand for loanable funds. And last, we talked about shifts of the supply of loanable funds. That's it for tonight. Have a great night, and I will see you in class tomorrow.